Well, I can't let any vehicles through. Yeah, no, you can't come down here. Yeah, he definitely gave him permission. Standing there in the freezing cold, we paid a heavy price for that one. My muscles gave in. One step, it was a pain. At some point, there was this uh, temptation to say, oh, well, maybe we will never finish this. We decided to run the 72 miles around Lake Tao. Why is it that I took part in that long, long run? It was to raise funds for scholarship. So that was the reason I was running. This is not just a long distance, but uh, it is also the high elevation. That means the oxygen is a bit thin there up there, and you have so many hills, so preparation is key. Two times, we decided to run like eight hours. Well, we're trying to finish the 72 within uh, 16 hours. Definitely this is a very long run because 72 miles without stopping is quite a challenge. We started at 9 p.m. at night, ran the whole night, and then the whole morning, and then part of the afternoon. The cutoff time is 18 hours. There were some obstacles. We, we knew that including this roadblock that we're not so sure. Definitely there are those big hills. Also at some point it will be very cold. My name is Camille Nalovsky. We're loaded, we've got food, we've got everything they could possibly need. We're the support crew. Yes, ready to go. When you think, you don't even think of the 72 miles, one mile at a time. That first part of the whole race, in my mind, I was in counting it. We just started, just started. We haven't begun counting yet. <laughs> this was one of our first checks. They haven't shut it any closure, don't need any extra water, so yeah. they're good right now. Yeah. We know that that first nine or ten miles is just a long hill. This is a very long hill. It's just climbing, climbing, climbing and pass through a tunnel. That tunnel was a kind of a complicated because it is so narrow and if uh, a car comes, it will be very tricky. I'm scared of the tunnel. Good. At the same time, we had to manage the, the pace. Otherwise, we may not be able to finish on time if it was too slow. But if it is too fast, the energy will not be enough to finish. I remember last year, unfortunately, there was a, a man who gave up after 68 miles. I did not want me to be finished by the race, uh, but to finish the race. So we didn't experience any incidents or anything that would concern us the first uh, part of it or throughout the night until sunrise came. How yes. long have you been running? It, it was, we cannot stop the yeah. legs. Will. So I'm concerned that I will get separated from you because these people won't feed you if I can't get through. You won't get through. We had come to the point where the people who were doing the 26 miles were starting their, their race. Our crew was not allowed to go through because uh, all traffic was stopped by a police officer and so that affected us as well because we depended on our crew coming along with us. Yeah, he definitely gave him permission and I took pictures of the license plates. Yeah, he didn't tell, he didn't tell he us didn't tell yeah, he didn't yeah, tell yeah. anything. There was a communication breakdown because sure enough, we were promised that our support crew or we'll be able to follow us. So I can't let anybody through unless we talk to Les, or if you want to run down right over there and get an event coordinator to come up here. We need to find Les Wright. Yeah, I said they must negotiate this. Maybe one vehicle can go support. I can't let any vehicles through. Yeah, yeah. No it's good. It's good. you don't want to get it chill. Pastor Osara also uh, felt cold. I did feel cold as well. It was uh, freezing, freezing temperature. Ooh, it's not good. Can you get in his car? Ooh, it's cool. But if that happens again, what I will do is just go ahead, not stopping. You said call him back? Yeah, he said that. He was at this point about to officiate the beginning of the 26 miles, so we couldn't reach him by phone. Or you, I mean, if you can get him on the phone right now. He said he's starting a race. Take the phone, let's go. You and me, and we get the events for the name. Any, any one of the event coordinators, if they come up here and say it, it's okay, then we'll let him, I'll let him through. Yeah, of course, momentum. You remember I talked to you last night? Yeah. What do you need work so that the police officer will allow our cars to come? Down here? Yes. 
No, you can't come down here. It's closed here now, but on, on the other side, it's open. Only this is closed. Yeah. These are the start. Mm -hmm. Down there is open. You can go south. Uh, Highway Patrol did not know that Dr. Ratsara and Anthony were doing the triple. When he found out that it was the triple, he told me how to go around. So we had actually stopped for probably 30 to 45 minutes at that one point. Fortunately, um, we were allowed to bring our crew and that is a good thing because we managed to have the same nutrition and the water, but we paid a heavy price for that one. And so that affected our muscles. My muscles gave in. It almost felt like my body was thinking that was the end of, of the race. It was at least 40 minutes, just not running, just standing there in the cold, freezing cold, with uh, running clothes. That, that is a no-no. And then once we, once we started moving again, even to have one, one step, it was a pain. <laughs> Our muscles were affected by the cold weather. It was a pain and trying to run, we couldn't run for a while. We have lost 40 to 50 minutes there again, just walking slowly. So if you add this, like one hour and a half lost, our plan was to finish like one hour and a half before the cutoff time. It was almost like we were starting the whole thing from the very beginning. At some point, there was this uh, temptation to say, oh, maybe we will never finish this. With this kind of uh, pain that we, we had because of our legs not moving. So we had to decide, are we going to try hard or just to give up and uh, give explanation. Well, we couldn't do it because we were stopped. Uh, maybe people will accept that explanation because it was a valid explanation. But I told Anthony, so I don't like that story. It was at this point, our minds that kept us uh, going. So we prayed, asking God to help us. I just look at Anthony and said, well, if that is the case, let's just be tough. We have to finish this, but there was a time when you look at the time. We were told that um, we needed to pick up our pace so that we can finish on time. And people are wondering if uh, we are going to finish it or not. And uh, in our mind, there was still a battle, especially when you climb these hills and uh, you see that the time is very short. At this point, it was mostly our minds that were keeping us going. You guys, you're so close. That's seven, seven, seven miles. There's a kind of a little bit of a suspense, especially uh, from uh, those who are waiting at the finish line, kind of uh, wondering if we are going to finish. We don't have much time. When we just had about six miles, we knew that we will finish this on time. So when we see lining up and happy, we were just praising God. And so it was such a joy to to come to the finish line and finally end the running on a good note with friends and family. It was so exciting and just people followed us and to go into the finish line. That all this uh, run that we had been doing uh, was all worth it as we were finishing. And we know that we endure that uh, so that uh, we can raise these funds, this scholarship, so that some young people will be able to come to Weimar to uh, get education. Only eternity can tell the impact of that because education is redemption.